In this video, we'll show you how the BirdDog P4K camera can be perfectly controlled with your Skahoi PVC Extreme. This amazing camera has a Sony Exmo RCMOS backlit sensor. It has a Carl Zeiss lens and it delivers full NDI in 4K. And besides this, it has all the connections you need like HDMI and even dual 6G SDI outputs. It also supports power over Ethernet or PoE and serial standards like RS232 and 422. But of course, we are controlling it over IP with the Visca protocol. This is BirdDog's flagship camera and we are very happy to support it. So just look at this. If uh, Let's say that I, I go really close in on a subject here and then I want to move um, pan and tilt. I have really sensitive movements to the focal length of the lens, which is very important for PTC cameras. Now, let me just zoom out again, because if I'm on a, on a greater distance from my subjects, I still have great PTC control with the joystick, um, which is now sensitive to the fact that I'm on a, on a further distance from the subject. So um, the pan, tilt and zoom control with the joystick is really well functioning and adaptive to the focal length, which is great and necessary even. So the, the joystick on the PTC Extreme is a Hall Effect joystick, so high precision joystick. When you rotate it, you zoom. But notice another thing, because the PTC Extreme has a zoom rocker, and the zoom rocker doubles, in this case, for zoom. So you can see that with the zoom rocker, I'm able to zoom out, and I can also zoom in, of course. And uh, now I do it really quickly like that. All right, so that, that is the dual function. Why did we do that? Well, because some people like to have it in either hand. They use left hand for zoom and this one over there. But also keep in mind that you don't have to have the double function. You can disable it on the rotational part of the joystick. But what if you put your PTC camera on a slider or some device to add a fourth dimension to your uh, image creation? Then you could assign the movement of the slider to the zoom rocker to make that uh, move the camera forth and back. So that's great. Let's look at something else essential to PTC operation. That would be focus. So um, what can we find here? Let's just zoom all the way in on this guy. Now, this is not entirely in focus, but up here we have a number of buttons that will help us because we are currently in manual focus mode. We have autofocus, we can enable and disable, we'll do that in a moment. But if I press this one, you'll see that we are having a, um, a push, to, um, um, focus on push, what is it called? It's like um, we push it and it does focus and then it goes back to manual. <laughs> I lost the word there, but uh, that's what this button does. But we can also do this manually. So with this, um, um, dial or thumb roller, we can adjust the focus as well, uh, which you can see that I'm doing right now. Now, the speed of this can be controlled by the speed limitation here. So if I set that all the way to 100, you are probably going to regret it quite quickly. So it's about setting the sensitivity of this action. And now you can see I have really a sensitive, that's probably too much because I can't even see what's happening. But if you do this dynamically, you can see I can quite quickly pull my focus and then I could dial it down a little bit if I want to go really slow to just achieve the perfect focus here with a manual way. So this, the, the thumb roller and the zoom rocker is uh, ergonomically positioned to work with my left hand here. And there you have the iris dial. So you see, once again, PTC Extreme is a lot about giving you as a professional PTC operator, having invested in this amazing camera, a really fine grained control of your image creation. Now, um, th this is an iris dial. So that's your iris you can control here. And uh, let's go to the exposure menu. You can see we're currently in auto mode. So if I go over to manual mode, then I can adjust the uh, iris on this one. So uh, no, actually we want to stay at, at manual here. If we are at, at this mode, you'll see this knob will help us to adjust the iris. So I can um, uh, turn it down here. Um, and that's what is happening here. So maybe you wonder what was iris mode, by the way, right here. This is called iris priority. So the camera has iris priority, gain priority, and uh, shutter priority here, which are all examples of automatic modes, but where you set iris shutter speed or gain as the fixed value and everything else will adapt to, um, to that circumstance by uh, auto, you know, automation. And uh, we also mapped, that is for easy control, we have mapped iris priority up to this button. So really pressing this one will toggle this one forth and back. It is the same, but it's just a quick uh, access to the same function. Once again, typically how Skyhoy controllers can be customized to exactly the, give you the, the things at your fingertips that, that you want. Because as you can imagine, these are OLED displays above every button and knob, and that gives you the ability to change what those buttons and knobs are doing. 
and the, this play will reflect the setting that you assign to this button if you wanted something else to be accessible in the upper left corner of the surface. Other than that, we have um, just to present what it consists of, we just jumped right into PDC control, right? Camera selector down here. So if you have multiple cameras, you can go between them. We have a shift key here, which is toggling forth and back between giving us access to some uh, additional functionality when it's available. It's not in every menu, that's the case. Then we have preset recall, and we have uh, four banks of presets. So one to 10 here, and if I press uh, this button, upper and lower edge, you can see I'm toggling between banks of presets that I have available. Uh, how do I work with presets? Well, if I want to store this as a preset, press and hold the button. It lights up green, it's now stored. If I uh, move the camera a little bit, I can save another preset on number four. Okay, And then it's now saved. So I click button number one and it goes to the first preset and then it goes back to the second preset I stored on number four. So that's preset. All standard stuff. Back to the menu up here. This selects what the upper buttons are doing. All right, let's just quickly browse through so that you have a quick idea about what to expect. Now in the exposure, we have access to the exposure mode, but if I go to manual, I can now adjust iris shutter speed and gain, all of them. And um, if I move on to shutter speed, you see shutter speed is now available to me, while iris and gain are going to adapt to that. So let me just put that back to a more normal value, the same with iris and gain. So let's move on from that. Exposure compensation is great because this is where you can kind of tweak the camera up and down to relate it to the uh, default level it would choose. So uh, co the compensation level can be changed here and you'll see that now it's going to underexpose the image a little bit compared to what its default would otherwise be. So that's exposure compensation as a general feature you find in many PTC cameras. White balance, there you have different white balance modes and you see this camera has a lot of them going for it. So you can choose all of the ones that are available in the camera. Available in the camera and that's the point because with Skahoy we will be looking at what exactly is able, uh, is this camera able to do. So it becomes like a native control experience while other PTC cameras will have their set of settings. And the same is true for iris shutter speed gain and every other value you see on this panel. They are kind of picked out of the panel and made sure to give you access to everything and only that. So that's another principle guiding how we work with um, PTC cameras and in general devices. Manual white balance mode will give you access to red and blue gain just to make sure you notice that if you are a, a, a color aficionado, someone who likes color. <laughs> and if you move on to this one, you have gamma mode available. There are three different uh, types, uh, pattern, straight and uh, standard with additional parameters to tweak this. Over here we have black gamma range. Let's, uh, let's see if we have something on shift. We don't have in this uh, case. Uh, image menu, noise reduction, there we have advanced mode and then some levels all the way down to off. Uh, gain point here um, and position and uh, chroma suppression over here. So you can see a lot of features and there might even be more in the configuration of the camera that you can break out onto these buttons if you want. In the system menu we have tally. Now uh, it's a bit weird to turn tally on off with a knob but you can see that it's actually lighting up in red right now on the camera here. So uh, we can turn on tally on and off. You know what you'll want to do? You can have this panel connect to something else like a video switcher and then you can pair the state of an input on your video switcher with the tally information of the camera. So in that way over IP we can map other information in your network to the tally lamp on your camera. And that's not going to happen on an up, that's going to happen under the surface of this panel. So it's part of the software inside that you set up in a web interface. But here I have the, now the ability to demonstrate that we can do it. Image flip and uh, also image mirror, I don't want to spend too much time. But here is a little saver uh, because the moment you want to do th things that may not be mapped out on the panel for your particular configuration, you can open the on-screen menu and then you can navigate with a joystick in this menu, move in to a uh, sub part of that menu. Let's say we want to adjust the offset, then you can use the joystick to do that, the values forth and back, and then finally we can exit the menu again with the encoder. So that's one of the, the, the things that is uh, an escape route in case there's a feature that you turned out to need but haven't mapped onto the panel or found in the default configuration here. Before we wrap up the video, let's look at um, the cruise control feature and the trace feature this is also offering. Now cruise control and trace are two great additions that are created by the Skahoy panel. Let me explain what trace is. Trace is essentially recording the 
speed commands sent by the joystick. So in other words, you can start trace recording, then it will detect that you move the joystick left and send speed commands to pan, tilt and zoom on the camera. And the time that you sent those commands, when you then later replay it, you will find the camera is moving along the same trace that you recorded by replaying those speed commands. So that's great if you want to have pre-recorded moves that you can uh, sweep around with the camera and so on. Another way to automatically control the camera is called cruise control. And in many cases, I find that a kind of more simple concept and is immediately useful without pre-recorded traces. So let's take that as an example. And now you look at the camera, we have it uh, here. So imagine that we are now looking at a stage with some performance going on, or it could be a, a classical concert or a church, um, whatever. Let's just move the camera slightly to the left. You see the slight movement. I, now I can start if I move on to cruise control here and I press this button. It is now for seven seconds going to keep this uh, slow movement towards the left and then it's going to stop as it did just right now. Let's just try it again with a little more speed. So I have a little more speed now. I press this button and it's just going to go for seven seconds like this and then it's going to shut down. So cruise control can be implemented in a number of ways. You can actually connect it to like a foot pedal. And why is that useful? Well, because the idea of cruise control is that you would start this movement, press the button, hands off, you can change to a different camera, you can recall a preset, you can switch to that on your video switcher, and then you could release the foot pedal to stop the movement. But for as long as you hold the foot pedal, the camera would actually pan to the left or the right or zoom out if you wanted to have a creep zoom. So those are some of the cool things about cruise control that they, like your car, allows it to just go without you actually pressing the accelerator pedal to keep it moving at a given speed. That's the same principle we have here. And it enables you, a single operator, to have more dynamic content coming out of your PDC cameras, only being a single operator of multiple cameras um, when you're using a Skyhoy controller. So if you, uh, if you like this video, we hope that you'll subscribe to our channel and you can leave a comment in the comment field as well. If you uh, want to have uh, some feedback or have questions about the camera, we'll try to answer that and uh, provide some more insight as you need it. And other than that, I want to thank you for watching this video.